Good afternoon from the Isle of Skye. Yeah, I'm indoors again. Just the, the response to the last video from indoors was um, much better than I expected. So thank you to everyone for your likes, your comments, and your subsequent subscribes on the back of that video. Very much appreciated. So I thought I'd do another one from indoors. Hopefully do one outdoors next week, but I'll talk about that later. So today I'm going to go, we're going to go back into Lightroom and today we're going to talk about local adjustments. So in Lightroom you have global adjustments and local adjustments. So let's head on into Lightroom and I'll talk about these. So global adjustments are very simple. Um, if we go to the basic panel here, if I say adjust the exposure, increase the exposure, it increases the exposure of the whole image. So globally, let's just undo that. So say we only wanted to affect certain parts of the image. So we wanted to say brighten the water here, or we wanted to darken the sky. So we've got three tools to, to hand where we can do local adjustments. So these are the adjustment, uh, excuse me, the graduated filter, the radio, radial filter and the adjustment brush. So let's go to the graduated filter first. So I've just selected that. And as you can see, you get this drop down panel here where you've got a lot of control that you can have on your graduate filter. So you've got your exposure, your contrast, highlights and so on. Now what I've done is I've set this to be minus 0 0.7 to begin with just so that when I apply my filter, I've got the same with the adjustment brush and radial filter. So when I initially apply them, I can see what's happening straight away. So for the graduate filter, all you do is you come over to your image, you click with the left mouse button and drag just like so, okay? So we've got free reign of where we want to place it. So we can do angular as well, because obviously in a landscape, um, you may have a mountain range, which increases in size as you go to the right of the frame or to the left of the frame. So you want the, obviously the filter to be at an angle, like you would do in the field. I mean, I, I use graduate filters in the field, but only when I need to use them. So what I mean by that is when my histogram tells me that I need to do that, um, which I did do in this case, but I just want to darken the sky a little bit more. So I said, I've got free reign of where I want to place it. If we, if we want a straight horizon, so if we've got an image, say a coastal image, which has got obviously a clearly defined straight horizon, we can hold down the shift key and that kind of locks it into play. So we've got that, we can go to the left. So we've got a, a filter going from right to left. If we go the opposite direction, we've got a straight filter going from left to right. But here we want a top to bottom. Now, I'm not too fussed about, you know, any straightness of horizon. I can get it pretty straight if I want, and I'll just go to there. So we can also drag from the top to the bottom, from bottom to top, and we can also click and select on this middle one here and move it up and down. Now, the further apart our top line is and our bottom line is, the, the softer or the harder the gradation. So as we make them further apart, the, grade, the gradation's softer, just like a soft grad in the field. But as we close that up, the gradation gets harder and harder. So the, 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 the closer they are, the more area above that top line is affected by the amount that we're going to change, if that makes sense. So if we, if we open that up, the top here will, have more, will be affected more by the 0 0.7 of exposure than down here at the moment. Now I want to affect, I want it to affect these areas down here a lot as well. So if I just bring that down, you can see it's darkening this area here. Now if I just lift that top one there, what I will also do is I'll select the show selected mask overlay down here. And that just basically turns to red and it shows you the areas that we're affecting. So I want it still to affect this bit of sky here. So I can either drag it down to something like that. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, Nick, the filters come over a mountain here and you can see it's affecting that by the red but we'll get to that in a second we can actually get rid of that so if I deselect that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset my exposure and then I'm just going to drag it to the left I'm not even looking at numbers I'm just looking at the image to where I'm happy that it's pretty much where I remember it to be you know when I, when I captured the image or something like that and what I do I normally just either use the exposure the contrast and the highlights or a com combination of the three um, for the sky, so just something like that. Just bring those highlights down a little bit, just so it, you know, it has more effect on these areas here. So getting back to a mountain, so obviously any of these adjustments we've made here are also affecting a mountain, especially the exposure. And obviously it won't affect the, the mountain with the highlights because it's all shadow area, but definitely the exposure will. 
So we've got this tool here, or this feature here called Range Mask, which is turned off at the moment. So if we click on there, we've got two options available to us at the moment. We've got Color and Luminance. Now I only ever use the Luminance feature. I've never found the Color feature to work for me. I've watched tutorials and I just can't get it to work for me. And for me, the Luminance just works for what I, for what I need it to. Probably the color would work well if you've got like say uh, just a, a pure blue sky, but a lot of my images tend to have cloud in the sky because that's kind of what I look for. So we click on luminance. Now we've got all these features show here. So if we click on the show luminance mask, it gives you the same as the mask overlay which we were using earlier. It just does a red overlay of the areas which are affected. Now we've got this range slider. Now as you can see, we've got two actual sliders we can drag from the left and we can drag from the light from the right so when we want wanting to affect bright areas only we drag from the left because dragging from the left protects the shadow areas so as we drag from the left you'll see it comes off of the mountain so our shadow area so it's protecting those areas from being affected if we were to drag from the right it actually take off the highlights because we're protecting the highlights, so it only affect the shadow area, so the mountain. But we want it to affect the sky only, so we drag from the left, and there we go, it's taken off the mountain. Again, I'm not looking at numbers, there's no point in looking at the numbers, I'm just looking at, at, the, sky, at the sky and the mountain, or mainly the mountain, because I don't want it to affect the mountain, so something like that. Now we can change the smoothness, we can make it hard or soft, but I just keep it in, or oh, sort of hard or soft, I just keep it in the middle at 50. So something like that, and if I deselect that, and there we go. Now if we just click on this button here to turn it off, you can see that was without the filter, and then with the filter in place, if we deselect it there, you can see it's just darkening it nicely, but not too much, just subtly. Turn it off and back on again. So that's a graduated filter for the sky, which is probably the most common use for it. But say we wanted to brighten the, the water in the image here, because the reason why I've composed my image like this is I want to use the water in the foreground to go through the, the image, lead the viewer's eye through the image to the mountain in the background. So I want this to be slightly brighter because I want your eye to look at the water and then what, you know, go through the flow of the water to the background. So we can use the graduate filter here as well. So we just click and drag again. Uh, something like that, and I'll reset my, actually what I'll do is I'll show slightly mask overlay, and then I'll just adjust it to where I want. And again, we can use the range mask to remove it from the rocks, because we don't want to brighten the rocks necessarily, so something like that. So that's our starting point, that's where we want it to affect, and we click off that. We'll reset our exposure, and actually we'll brighten just a little bit, and then range mask, Luminance, show luminance mask. Now this time we want to drag from the left again because we want to protect our shadows. So there, just slowly drag to the right. Now obviously these rocks here do have some lichen in them so it will affect that. Um, but something like that, so it's, it's taken off the rocks, these, this rock here and these rock here. So deselect that and all I'm going to do is just increase the exposure a touch and maybe the clarity a bit just to make the water pop a bit but not too much because you actually start losing texture if you increase the clarity too much. So something like that. Yeah, and then if we deselect our um, filter and we turn it off there and then turn it back on again. So it's just, it's just increased the brightness of it a bit. So your eye initially gets drawn to that and hopefully you go through the scene, you go to the bright areas at the back and then looking at the mountain. So as I mentioned there, it's obviously the rock here has lichen on it and it's obviously the, the adjustments that I've made have increased the bright areas there. Now actually in this instance it's actually not too bad, it's actually it's, it's worked quite nicely but these really dark rocks I'm not affecting because of the range mask. But say we didn't want it to affect this area at all, well, with the graduate to filter, what we can actually do is we can come up here and select brush. We're not selecting the adjustment brush, we're just selecting the brush feature of the graduated filter and click on erase and then what we can do is we can actually adjust the size of it by using the mouse wheel and we can just 
brush over this area here and there we go, we've taken it off of this rock completely. If we now click on the shoulder and its mask, we can see there's none of these highlight areas of the rock affected. So that's the graduated filter for both sky and foreground. Well, actually, if we just come to this image here, this image here, see I just wanted to darken the foreground a bit here. We could just go to graduated filter, just drag it up, and just almost like a vignette, but only to the bottom right-hand corner. And there we go, we've just darkened that area there. Just, just ever so slightly, because it was just, for me, it was just a little bit too bright. So moving on to the radial filter, if we look at this image here. So the main focal point image of my image is this hill here called Cleet, and there's a nice little bit of light on it. Um, but I remember there was, it was slightly brighter when I, when I captured the image. So probably just the, the other adjustments that I've made have kind of darkened it down a bit. So I want to brighten it up a bit. So I'm going to use a radial filter. So we click on it up here, and like with the um, graduate filter, you get this drop-down panel here, which has got the same adjustments. So with the, with the radial filter, what you do is, so we want to cover this area here. So clicking on the middle of it with the left mouse button, we just click and drag out. So as you see, it works from the center out. Now, when you first apply the radial filter, it, um, the, the, any changes that you already have made works outside of the, the oval, the circle, whatever shape you've made. So we want it to be, for this particular image, we want it to affect anything inside the oval. So we, all we do is click on the invert button here, down here. So now anything that we, any changes we make are only gonna affect the inside of this. So like usual, I've got the exposure set to 0 0.7 of a stop, just to so I can see what I'm doing. So if I click on the select and mask overlay, and just, we can click and drag, and we can also change the, we can rotate it by clicking and dragging on the edge, and change in size, so something like that for starters. And, yep, so deselect that, and then reset our exposure, and we're just gonna increase exposure ever so slightly, not much, just ever so slightly, even just something like that. Now what this has also done is, if we go back to our show selected mask overlay, there's areas just outside it which have been affected as well. So we can use the brush tool and erase, and then just change the size of it. And then we can just brush around the edges. I'm gonna go a bit on the quicker side than we would normally do. Just to give you an idea. There you go. And there we have it. So if we deselect the mask overlay, deselect our filter, and now if we turn it off, you know, it's got nice light on it, but just turning it on, we've just increased the light, the brightness a bit more. So it just lifted it a bit more. So that's one, one use of the radial filter. So it can also be used to give like a, a vignette effect. So as I say, when you first apply it, it's applied to everything outside of it. So if we look at this image here, so if we were to add a vignette, a normal vignette to this, what would happen is the vignette would start affecting the, the, the top of the frame quite quickly. And obviously our subject's really quite to the top of the frame. So using the radial filter, we can actually control where the vignette is, is being placed. So if I just place it over the bird like so, and we reset that. So as I darken it outside, darken down the exposure, it's affecting everything outside of it. Now obviously that's too much, so I'm just gonna to go to about there, deselect it, and if we turn it off, and then turn it back on again, so we've just added a natural vignette, um, but we've had more control over its placement. So that's a radial filter. So moving on to the adjustment brush, what we can do is we can go to the first image, where we brighten the, the water at the bottom of the image. Now we can use the adjustment brush to do the same job. So if I just delete the graduated filter, if I click on show selected mask overlay and then select our adjustment brush, we'll just quickly go over the water, increase the size of the brush. So this time we can have more control over and not affecting this rock here on the right of the frame. And then, there we go. 
deselect that and we can make our initial changes. So we just want to increase the brightness a little bit. And what I normally do with, it, with water like this is I increase the clarity just to make that pop a bit more. Not too much, just again, subtlety, just a little bit. Now then I will click on the range mask and luminance, show luminance mask. And this will also show areas which we haven't um, brushed over. Mm, just a little bit of water there. And then we're wanting to protect the shadows, so we're going to need to drag from the left to the right. And just want to take it off some of these rocks to there. And if we turn that off and turn it back on, it's just kind of drawing your attention to the water. And that's local adjustments for you. Um, hopefully, you know, I've just, I've just touched on them. Um, hopefully you can go away now and find out how they can work for you. So hopefully you liked this video. Um, obviously if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, any comments, as always, appreciated. And if you haven't already subscribed, you know, please consider subscribing to the channel to see more of my videos and hit that bell icon to be notified of when another video is uploaded. Until that one, bye bye. Silly me, I forgot something. So at the start of the video, I mentioned about doing a, a video from outdoors. So if you follow me on social media, you will have noticed recently that uh, the images I've been posting are from basically birds in my garden. So I'm awaiting uh, a ground feeder and some new seeds and some mealworms and some fat balls. So I'm hoping to do a, a basically a, a video on garden bird photography. May work, may not, obviously, because I'm at the, uh, the hands of the birds. Um, obviously coming down and be able to get images at the time but you know I'll give it a go so hopefully that'll be sometime next week I'll film that so the video will be out maybe if I can get the video done it'll be within the next couple of weeks so yeah as I've just said until that one bye bye